All right there, you're still live on the show. Good morning. Uh, it's still the coverage of Ghana's 59th Independence Day celebration is live from our studios here at Laboni. Now, earlier, I told you that we'll be joined by KB Asante. Many of you know him as KB Asante, but his name is Kweku Bapri Asante. He was a principal secretary in charge of African affairs during the Nkrumah government. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Now, the designation principal secretary in charge of African affairs, what really does it mean? Well, at independence, uh, ministries had as a head a minister. The, then you had an official who was a civil servant and he was known as a permanent secretary. The idea was that he stays there, the minister can be um, uh, 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 sacked, appointed and so on, but he was permanent. And it was believed that it got into the heads of these principal secretaries. They thought, so the name was changed. The permanent was removed and were principal secretary because there were so many secretaries in the ministry, assistant secretary, he was the principal secretary. And he, was in, uh, he helped the, uh, the minister to formulate policy in accordance uh, with the uh, 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 major policies enunciated by the president and so on. So uh, the principal secretary was in effect uh, the head, official head of the ministry. Now I think you call them chief directors and so on. You always go on changing names, thinking <laughs> things will be better. It's all just silly. But he, he, the work, the, what the person does is most important. He or she was the kingpin okay. of the ministry. Okay. And in your case, what was your job description? My, my job was well, African Af in, in fact, a, a foreign ministry, the, uh, African Affairs was part of the foreign ministry. Then Nkrumah Mone separated it because he was uh, very keen on promoting the African cause. And he thought uh, the ministry was too slow the, uh, uh, and uh, they didn't understand what he was doing. So I went, uh, uh, African Affairs Secretariat was moved to Flagstaff House and I was a principal secretary working actually in, in his office. There were only three of us there. Uh, uh, the head of the civil service, uh, who was uh, at the same time secretary to the cabinet. There was no uh, well, chief of staff and so on, all this. I don't understand all these things. Uh, he did his work, head of the civil service and secretary to the cabinet. He was in Kroma's office. He was in the way my boss, the boss of all of us. Then okay. we had Michael Diana, ambassador special duties. Three of us were in Kroma's office proper. I was a small boy amongst them. The actual secretary of Nkrumah was one Miss Powell, okay. English woman, who did the secretarial work, confidential work, and so on. You mentioned that you, you were the small boy in the office at the time. Yes. How, how small? Oh, I was a boy, is it 35, 36, something like that. And I, I was a junior. I, okay. I mean, those days, we respected hierarchy. Although we, uh, uh, I regarded them as my colleagues, I knew they were my seniors. They knew they were my junior. For example, in Okokun, who was in charge of the entire civil service, it meant that he was in a way my boss. So now and again, he asked me to go and do something which had nothing to do with African affairs. And, uh, but because of my senior, I did it. And, and I like it because it made me understand how the system worked. Otherwise, I would have been uh, restricted. Only the diplomas, the African affairs, and so on. But uh, because I was in that office and... Uh, I, I knew that I was to learn all the time, and I listened to my seniors like Oko and Dan, and I, I learned a lot within a short time. It, it gives me the impression that you worked very closely with a man, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. I did. And what kind of man was he? Oh, he was a hard taskmaster. To be frank, when I went there at first, I didn't like it. Because he came at 7.30, if you were two minutes later, and sometimes he may not want you, but he wanted you and you were not there after 7.30. Uh, he may not, the way he looked at you, you would do it again. Um, and when he came to the office, he sat, uh, he worked continuously until about one or one, uh, one thirty. 1.30 a.m. Uh, or no, p.m.? No, he comes 7.30 in the morning. He yeah. works until lunchtime. Okay. 1.30 or 2. Okay. And during that time, none of us could go out. 
<laughs> you see? Interesting uh, one. Uh, yes, and uh, all the time you were, he, he comes to office, he gives you some work. I want a draft on this at 7.30 by 8 o'clock, 8.30, he wants the first draft. And okay. he may make changes and you go on, then something else follows. So it, 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 we really worked. Uh, but I enjoyed it. It was, good. it was good training and it was good experience. So in Kroma, he was a hard task mask, uh, master. And, uh, well, was there a certain sense of haste in the way things, work was done? A haste. certain sense of haste. Haste. A certain speed. A oh, certain yes. Agency. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. As uh, I once said that Nkrumah wanted, uh, always wanted something done yesterday. What he asked you to do today, he, wants it yes, uh, he wanted it yesterday. So, yes, when he gave you work, you must. Uh, he was always in a hurry to do things, yes. Why? Why was he always in a hurry? No, but look, you have a right down corner. Do you like the presence, even now, after 59 years after independence? Do you like the way things are going? And we have done, uh, we have made progress. Uh, education, health, uh, economy, and so on. But do you like the way things are uh, right now? I personally, at Independence, I thought of bigger things. Therefore, I'm not so happy. But you, perhaps you young men will be happy because that's all you know. Uh, but uh, Nkrumah uh, had a vision. He wanted to do something very uh, great. Therefore, he was impatient. He was in a hurry. He wanted things done. And I believe that any leader of an African country, Africa is in a uh, poor state at the moment, unnecessarily poor, because of our own uh, uh, bad ways and uh, whatever it is. Uh, and therefore, anybody who wants to get things done in Africa must be in, in, in a haste. He cannot. He has to work very hard. We, 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 uh, there's no reason why Ghana should be as uh, 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 relative poor as it is now. Do Ghana think, is a rich country. Do you think that the agency, the sense of agency, is no longer there today? No, it's not there. I don't, of, of course, I can. Uh, I'm not a good judge because I'm not in the thick of things as I was with Nkrumah. And I knew how he worked. Later I worked with a few others and I knew there was a big difference. Okay. Now, on, uh, when Nkrumah went to Hanoi on the peace mission and the coup later happened, how was the government, the Flagstaff House, how, how did you get, receive the news? The staff Actually, I wasn't there when the coup occurred. Wait, you weren't in Ghana? I was not in Ghana. Okay, where were you at the time? I was in Addis Ababa. And Kruma sent me to Addis Ababa on a special mission. So I was there. Special mission? Yes. What mission was it? Oh, to deal with African unity, some uh, confidential work with the Secretary General, and so who was uh, his friend and also my friend. I knew him well. So I was in the OEU on African affairs, African matters. And Kruma wanted to establish uh, what he later called the Union of Af African States, like the European Union is. Yeah. And uh, uh, there were so many people who were against it or were not, who did not understand it. And therefore, uh, he sent me there to assist the Alotelli to do certain things, uh, temporary and come back. Well, how, how, let me take you back a bit. In 1960, Ghana became a republic. Um, our first Independence Day celebration as a republic. Do you remember that event? How was the euphoria like? Oh, yes. Uh, there wasn't euphoria as rather uh, uh, a movement forward. Uh, it wasn't the same as independence when we all went gay. Uh, you can, uh, the high lives which were composed at that time will tell you what, how, the, uh, what, how people felt. Independence, a uh, Republic Day uh, was not, uh, did not uh, bring the same euphoria. Uh, we, it was something which uh, uh, was, uh, uh, in fact, many people thought we got independence and we did not. We were as independent as we are now. Only it, uh, the uh, Queen of England was the Queen of Ghana. And he had, uh, she had a governor general here who looked after things. And after, when we became a republic, our prime minister, Nkrumah, became the president. So there was 
no, not that direct connection with the British monarchy. Over the last few years, do you, when you compare the, the Independence Day celebrations, the significance it held in 1960, for instance, do you get a sense that it holds the same significance for Ghanaians? The Independence, Independence Day celebration itself. The celebration, no, uh, a celebration is only to mark an event. Uh, uh, you mean the independence itself? I, I am referring to the, the, celebration. the celebration, the event, the event, the significance of the, the event. event. It's just like the way you were born. You always celebrate birthdays, not uh, uh, why do you do it? Because uh, a year has, uh, uh, has come and you. You know, people have been asking me, do we celebrate it? it to be honest, it's a silly question to ask me whether we should celebrate independence. You, you don't, uh, when your birthday is, uh, uh, comes to celebrate, especially 50, 60, 70, uh, the Bible says 3 and 10. So if you are 70, you let, uh, and you celebrate your birthday. Of course, if you are unwise, you uh, use money you haven't got, you celebrate it well, and then after that you go broke for years. <laughs> but... You celebrate it. So the, the uh, celebration has nothing to do with the, uh, 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 you know, how you, uh, with the event as such. Okay. Uh, you know, so Independence, March 6th, yes. We celebrate with Gaston. I think we should mark it every, uh, every year. Is you don't celebrate because we are doing well. And if we are not doing well, you fold your arms and you uh, uh, weep. No. It was a great occasion. We came free to manage or mismanage our affairs, as Nkrumah said. And if things are, uh, are not gone well, it's our fault. It's not the president's fault. We have to elect them. Okay. Um, yes. And if we say that uh, there's so much corruption, we are part of the problem. You know. So we, we, this celebrate, we should ask ourselves, uh, how far have we come? What are the problems? It, 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 uh, the problems are not caused by one man or one group. And we, uh, what happens, even when we want to discuss anything, uh, it's like, oh yes, uh, this uh, party did the same. It is a stupid way of, of looking at things. A human being makes mistakes. A human being makes progress. So if something has been done and it wasn't the correct thing proper, we should uh, admit it so that we don't repeat it. And at independence, for example, as we celebrate, we look back at um, what we wanted, at Nkrumah's aspirations, uh, how he led us into independence, ask ourselves, how far have we come? Have we done the right thing? Uh, uh, does, has independence brought a blessings, rare blessings to Ghana? Okay. Interesting comments coming from KB Asante. KB Asante is a retired diplomat. Information I'm getting now is that guests have started arriving at the Independence Square. So we'll go briefly to David Atto for a live um, telecast from the Independence Square. When we come back into the studio, we will continue the conversation with KB Asante. Not go to wasted money. All right, so I have been engaging KB Asante in a conversation in here in the studio while the uh, broadcast was ongoing. And the focus of our conversation has been where we are as a country. And if there is room for so much more that could have been achieved. And KB tells me that in his view, he thinks that Ghana should have gone so far. But it appears that we have achieved some, made some gains. But there's still room for so much more improvement. KB, why do you think that we haven't been able to get to that point where we should have been as a country by now, at 59 years? Um, because... You know, the, that self-confidence, that self-reliance which Nkoma built, which we all imbibed to some extent, was lost over the years. And uh, there's a tendency uh, to, uh, uh, to think of ourselves as uh, not so mature people who needed help all the time uh, uh, from outside. I mean, let's, be, uh, let's look back. In Nkoma's time, we were that confident. I travel and they see my passport. Oh, Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah. People even knew who the president was. Yeah. And now, the, any little thing, we have a problem. We want Europeans and others to tell us that what we are doing is right. If we have a, 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 
uh, 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 our budget. Sometimes we can't balance it. Others help us to balance it. And so on. It, 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 all that shows that we, we don't seem to realize that we are masters of our destiny. We should uh, plan. And if we, uh, naturally, there's a lot to do. We don't have money for everything. We should plan so that we know what to do this year, what to do next year, and so on, and move on. Uh, we, we, in many ways, we are rather, uh, rather less. This is what I, I may be exaggerating, but I personally am not happy with what is happening. In those days, we had confidence. So, so what happened? Confidence in 1957, 1960, 1966, then all of a sudden appears that that confidence is lost. It's not all that's all of a sudden. All are, if you look at Ghana's history, I once wrote a paper, uh, with a, uh, when is Ghana? With a, where did we come from? We, when we had uh, modern, uh, when the modern Ghanaians or people moved from the north to this place, so, uh, then uh, we were, we had a certain culture. Then came the slave trade, which uh, after, if you look at the history of it, it made us look inferior. And we ourselves tended to believe it. Then came colonialism. Again, we were second-rate citizens in our own country, in Ghana. And uh, we were told that we, are, we were being helped to govern ourselves. And we believed it. To create the impression that we were un incapable of governing Not incapable, ourselves. not ripe, not yet, not incapable. Okay. Even incapable, no, we're being uh, trained. Now we've got independence. And Kruma said, no, that nonsense should stop. We are capable of managing or mismanaging affairs. Then came the coup, and then the idea was all that Nkrumah did was not good enough and so on, as some of our leaders said. And so uh, uh, how do we move forward? We must listen to uh, others, the big powers, the UN. UN is there for everybody, uh, but we, uh, we, we, we seem to think that the uh, uh, other organizations and countries can develop this country. We use the word development partners. In my opinion, that also indicates our lack of confidence. That nobody will help you to develop. You develop yourself. Yes, you need cooperation. Uh, you, 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 uh, you need cooperation. You must understand the world in which you live. It's not a very small world. You can't do it alone. So you uh, 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 get uh, you work within the system. It's not uh, assistance or anything. We all in, in that case we all partners. Everybody, every country, we all partners. But to think that there are some special partners who will help you. Develop means that you're, there's something uh, started wrong with your thinking. You are not that confident that you can do it, and we can do it. This, to me, is a great uh, sense in course, what we have lost. It's, it's, quite, it's quite interesting that you make all of these points. But then, if we lack that confidence to think that we can do it, how then do we bring back that confidence? Because it's important for our journey we we'll bring forward. it tomorrow we'll tell, look this nonsense should stop yes we need cooperation with outsiders we need to uh, 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 avoid going to the IMF because you go there when you are broke you don't go there for them to uh, uh, put a, a stamp of approval of what you are doing it's not done you don't go there when everything is fine of course you belong to we belong to the IMF and there are uh, 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 rules they, they, they are uh, certain ideas which they put forward, which are uh, simple and normal. You see, sometimes we talk as if running a country is different from running your home. If you have so much money and you, uh, uh, you go and borrow and you use the money foolishly, you get into trouble. It's the same with a country. A country uh, must look after its resources just as a uh, 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 a uh, an individual, a family, uh, does it. If there's something wrong, you try and put it right in yourself. You don't, at the first instance, go outside and ask for help. We have all the imp uh, powers and instruments here to make Ghana 
what we uh, uh, as we like to to make Ghana the great country which we all aspire to. We, the moment we 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 we, we, we think that it's outsiders who can help us to move forward, we lost. That's my view, and that is what is happening now. We should, yes, I'm not saying we should ignore outside uh, uh, oh. cooperation and so on. Cooperation, uh, uh, you know, but we must realize that we alone. And when there's a problem, we should think there's a problem out here in Ghana. We are not doing that enough. We are, we not, are not doing that We are that not thinking enough. about our problems on our own. And on our own, we are not. I don't, I don't say, I, again, uh, uh, here, uh, I may not be 100% correct, but in Kruma's time, I knew how the problems were, 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 were there. He, uh, he collected the people who are second views, including opposite views, in small groups, and the problem was trashed and action taken. And of course, the ministers too were supposed to promote the policy. If you are in, uh, say, education, you think of ways and means of promoting uh, that policy, even before Nkrumah comes in. Of course, as time went on, Nkrumah was so, sometimes so powerful that, uh, 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 that when I say powerful, he, his ideas he had, uh, were so intense. He wanted to do things tomorrow. So sometimes he, he didn't wait for the ministry to evolve its own plan to achieve its purpose. And he, uh, he gave took off. Yeah, he kicked off in a certain direction. So let's look at a typical situation. Ghana's cocoa production is reducing, slumping. Typically, how would Nkroma have probably tackled and addressed this problem? He would have tackled it by uh, uh, the method we are using now, spraying, giving, helping the farmers to grow more cocoa. But more importantly, Nkroma would have, and he did, how do we increase, uh, 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 make cocoa really help us. We grow the cocoa beans. We've been growing the beans since the time of God's way. Help us to uh, do so many things. Uh, build Achimota, build uh, Kolibu, uh, build Takorade, and so on. Now, the price has gone uh, uh, down, but what we have to do is more expensive. So what do we do? We should process our raw materials. We should not only export cocoa beans, but try to turn it into cocoa powder, cocoa liquor, and so on. 59 years. Nkrumah tried to uh, build silos to, uh, uh, so that we don't have to sell the cocoa at any price. After the coup, what happened? Maybe that wasn't the best thing to do. But we went on, uh, what he did was wrong, silos, blah, 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 all that nonsense. We have done nothing about it. We thought of international cocoa agreement. It took us some 18 years before we had the agreement. We had the agreement only to forget it because that, the agreement was in, in, the, in, in, in some respects similar to what Nkrumah was trying to do. Now the, it has collapsed. If you ask anybody, even the cocoa marketing board, uh, 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 about international cocoa agreement, he may not even know that we ever dreamt of it or we even had it after 18 years and what we did with it. This is our problem. But perhaps if the European uh, community or some other groups have told us something about it. We'll then say, okay, that's a good thing, let's do it. This is a problem of Ghana. <laughs> Ghana's problem appears to be the lack of confidence and belief in its own governance systems. And so uh, KB is saying that we need to ensure that we work on that confidence as a country to ensure that we build strength and confidence in our own institutions. We need to always wait for the International Monetary Fund to tell us that what we are doing is right before we continue to do them. Now, briefly before you leave us, Ghana's 59th Independence Day celebration is today. There are many young people out there who haven't seen Ghana under Nkroma. All we know is Ghana today. As a way of inspiring them, what would you say to the teeming youth for who this year's Independence Day celebration has been dedicated? Yes. The, first of all, they should realize that much depends upon themselves. They, uh, they yes, they are studying. Some of them, the, the, the schools have been open. 
not long ago in Kroman's time, not everybody could go to school. Now, on paper, everybody should go to school. They should have confidence in themselves, and they should have a, a, a future. They should believe in something that they need not be as poor as their parents, and that their parents help, but that is not the end. They should also fashion a future uh, for, uh, for themselves, and uh, they should have values in society. So it, it, it doesn't, uh, it, somehow they should realize that uh, life is not just uh, enjoying yourself. Uh, life is more than that. They should have value, should, uh, and therefore uh, the land of least resistance is not the only way out. And that is why uh, when, they, and when they grow up, perhaps they should not be as corrupt as we are. We, this is what the youth should it doesn't uh, help uh, anybody any far. Is your generation corrupt? My generation wasn't. Uh, uh, fortunately, of course, there were little corrupt deals and so on, but it wasn't. But as a matter of fact, uh, Nkuma once, I was alone with him, he showed me dossiers on some of the ministers which were corrupt. And I asked him after that, I said, why don't you sack them, deal with them? He was quite for some time. I thought I had asked a wrong question. Then I said, I want you know, how do I know that if I sack them and bring new people, uh, they will not also chop? <laughs> and I, we both laughed. Um, no, but the, uh, yes, there was corruption even at that time. And uh, they were, uh, corrupt practices were dealt with, but perhaps not as vigorously as perhaps even in Kroma uh, should have uh, done and is still with us. And so the young men should vow okay. today that let's put corrupt ways uh, behind us okay. and let's make Ghana the... Okay. Thank you very country. much. KB Asante is my guest in the studio and it's Ghana's 59th Independence Day celebration. Uh, it is my understanding that the president, John Bramani Mahama, has just arrived at the Independence Square. So we'll go over straight to the Independence Square for a continuation of the program from that place.